These individual stem cells are then suspended in petri dishes of nutrients and placed in an incubator to grow. At the moment, there's not enough meat here to make even one single dinner. It's running at a very small scale. It's more proof of concept. But it's thought that when the process is scaled up, cells from one single biopsy of muscle from one single cow would be able to produce over 20,000 tons of lab-grown beef. As they multiply, the muscle cells naturally fuse together to form fibers, which are then encouraged to form these little rings of muscle tissue. After about six weeks, the rings of muscles are harvested and cut into strips. It might not look like traditional muscle tissue because there is no blood or fat or connective fibers. But at the cellular level, each strip is indistinguishable from regular beef. It's one thing to grow muscle cells in the lab, but at the moment, this looks like tiny little worms. And it doesn't smell very appetizing either. So really the key in passing man-made meat as a nice piece of beef lies wholly in the taste. So have you tasted your lab-grown beef yet? Uh, we haven't yet, so we're going to do this this afternoon. I'm very excited about that. Um, and this is actually for the first time that we have sufficient material to make tasting uh, a realistic thing to do. To oversee this historic moment, Mark has drafted in food technician Peter Varstreit. It's a bit like noodles. Mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. Peter's first task is to try and turn these strips of man-made meat into something like a miniature hamburger. So how many individual uh, fibers do we have there? Around 600. 600. And they were all individually grown. The muscle fibers are mixed with salt to bind them together. Then it's into the frying pan. So are you anxious? Pretty excited. Oh, yes, I am, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Very, very much so. OK, so the first ever frying of lab-grown meat. Yes. It doesn't look like much, but this is a big moment in culinary science. Peter assesses if the tiny burger is behaving like a more traditional beef patty. A little bit of shrinkage. So the water is coming out? Yeah, which is normal because the product was quite wet. So that's to be expected. How does it smell? Neutral. Neutral. Neutral, yeah. And now you see a slight brown, crispy, crispy surface. Brown yeah. coating appearing, yeah. Finally, the moment of truth. It may be one very small mouthful, but it's one giant leap for the future of lab grown beef. Mark, go ahead. Really? Well, there we go. I don't need a big fork like this, though. It's salty. And it has a very smooth uh, texture. You feel the individual fiber still. And it basically tastes like fried chicken. <laughs> 